Marry the best man you can find, regardless of his marital status. I never had sex, but when I wanted to. My husband has seven wives. Welcome to the Live with Lindy show. I'm the sixth. That's what kills regular marriages, being on top of one another. Alex has always been a controversial person. Everything they're doing is their own choice. You think it's a good idea for you to be going to that? I'm not doing this for me. I'm doing this for my children. The relationship between the Joseph wives is stronger and stranger than we thought. I possess the power to inflame him. Sometimes I wonder if we're crossing the line here. He told us all we were going to be widows someday. It's going to be really hard. All right, we're out of here. Load up. We went to Big Water, Utah, which is where the Joseph family lives. Alex Joseph has eight wives, and they all live in a sort of compound, I guess you might call it. He sort of stays wherever he feels like staying that particular night. Each one of Alex's wives has a very different, distinct personality, and uh, I think that's one of the things that he finds so appealing, that if he wants to be with a different personality type, he doesn't have to get a divorce and marry another woman, he just goes to a different room. Alex has been on the boat a lot with the kids. I thought Alex Joseph was definitely very charismatic, but I can't imagine any one man being so great that I'd want to share him with that many people. I mean, the greater he is, the more I'd want him for myself. When I first married Alec, he had just been recently kind of kicked out of Montana. He just didn't fit in there in that fundamentalist, polygamist community he was in. And uh, he said he he was headed for the Grand Canyon to try to find a hole bigger than the one he got himself into. You should be able to marry the best man you can find, regardless of his marital status. And that's what I did. I'm just an old plague wife. Makes you weird. How many people do you know that share, well, that husband has several wives? I think a lot of women could live this lifestyle and really enjoy it. I just don't think there's very many men that can pull it off. Boy, it's not something I go out trying to talk people into at all. It certainly has been right for me. We're getting here, I'm very excited. It's so beautiful here and we're about to cross the Utah border. We're going to meet the Josephs for the first time. The town of Big Water is in the middle of nowhere. The only thing remarkable about the place is that it was founded by one of Utah's most notorious polygamists, Alex Joseph, the patriarch of the family we're about to meet. I think this might be it. I just can't get over how absolutely silent it is in big water. Just listen to how quiet it is. You hear that? This is the town of Big Water. Quiet. We arrived in Big Water expecting to find the Joseph compound bustling with mothers and children. Instead, we found a ghost town. But once the workday ended and school was let out, the Joseph family compound sprang to life, and more than one person was willing to give us the grand tour. Okay, um, Eli and Lindy, my, Lindy's my mom, and they're my dad's wives, and they live in that house. What do you want to show me? Yeah, I'm just showing you the dog. Right here is the library, we call it the Root Cellar Library. This is the playground. Okay. How many brothers and sisters do you have? I have eight sisters and ten brothers. <laughs> That's a lot. So far, I have chili cheese. Why? You chili, chili cheese? It is a good lifestyle, and it's just a crying shame that there aren't more men out there that have the courage, because 
you know, it's a tremendous responsibility. You know, most people, all they think about is the sex, but they don't see that you've got all these women and all these kids bringing their problems to you and wanting you to solve them. You know, you're their husband, their daddy, and, and, and you're the guy to fix everything. And, and it, it's a tremendous responsibility, and Alex has been equal to the task. This is my home and Don's home. Mm -hmm. Bless you. That's the place where we dig. I don't know if Joanna's home. Is anybody home? This is Austin, my uncle. Exactly like a brat. You can tell he's a brat. I can't really get my head around the fact that they're a family, and I still can't really comprehend that all of those women are Alex's wives and they're all Alex's children. Maybe it does take seven women and one man to really get a harmonious whole. It seems to have worked in our family. But he's got pretty dynamic wives, too. <laughs> Bo is in real estate, Joanna's an artist, and Eli is a journalist and a lawyer. Margaret is blunt and sassy, and Diane is the quintessential mother. They're self-sufficient, successful, and in love with the same man. This is the Joseph Genealogy Library. And I'm looking at these old photos of Alex when he was first married to his wives back in the 1970s. He was definitely one of Utah's political mavericks back then. Besides being a polygamist, Alex was a one-time Marine, a cop, a businessman, a homesteader, and even a public official. With all that I've heard and now seen about this man, I can't wait to find out who he is now. No sooner do we meet Alex Joseph than our story takes a disturbing turn. He, I think he said this is awful or something. Is his name really Rambo? Yeah, but it's spelled uh, R-A-M-B-E-A-U-X. <laughs> Why don't you meet Dave and Tara? Dave, how you doing? Alex's wives warned us that their husband was no longer the man we had seen in the photographs, at least physically. And this is Tara. Hi. Oh, hey, I'm sorry. I usually go by Dave. For the past two years, Alex has been dying of liver cancer. It's nice that they're opening our, their doors like that. You know, some people might be a little bit more like nervous about it. He seems totally, totally at ease, and it's nice to hear that he's telling you, you know, don't go tiptoeing around. Just sort of do the stuff that makes it a little bit easier. The first chance we got to spend some time with this notorious polygamist was, ironically, on his weekly chemotherapy trip. Alex spent a long three weeks in that hospital two years ago. It was inevitable that Alex's illness would complicate our story. He's the nucleus of this family. Almost inconceivably, his cancer threatens to make not just one widow, but eight. You know, just come on, and if they say no camera, we just turn the damn thing off. When he got out of the hospital, I said, uh, if you're if you're up for living some more, I want to help you do that. If you're ready for dying, I want to help you do that. And my mind is there right now, just helping him make that transition. I knew I needed to come along on this weekly family ritual, so I joined Alex's wife, Eli, and their daughter, London. Uh, <laughs> he's bashful. No. Pump up that thing, come on. You want to take bets? He sure struck me as somebody who'd never get sick. And that really described everybody's reaction. You know, call me at work and tell me somebody walked in his house and shot him. It was much less shocking than a cancer diagnosis. <laughs> Waiting for Alex's blood test results is really intense. Beneath all the lightheartedness, there's a certain anxiety that no one shows. Today's test results will reveal the success or the failure of the most aggressive treatment Alex has ever had. Why do you think it's going to be a bad day? I'm just afraid they're going to tell him the chemo's not working at all, this new treatment, and, and to forget about it. So, that's what I'm afraid of. But we'll see. Tell me what you're lecturing on again. Oh, um, current events on the uh, Grand Circle. Elizabeth's an attorney. Okay. She's, uh... Holy cats, okay. That it. Now, I give up. Don't do that, honey. <laughs> No, no, what is this thing?
The new chemotherapy treatment doesn't seem to be working. The damage to his liver is progressing. It is, it is bad. We're going to have to, uh, I'm going to move to Idaho. I don't think this is a healthy planet. I tell people that uh, having cancer is one of the uh, best experiences of my life. You know, and I don't think I'd have done it on purpose, but <laughs> but uh, I learned a lot, met a lot of people, been made aware of things that uh, other people take for granted, and uh, you start learning, running your life through a, a meter, and then uh, you know you start trying to get your money's worth, uh, maybe make a few changes. But it's um, been a good experience. And, uh, you know, after 60 years, I don't, I don't mind it all that much. The guy deserves a rest, and he's suffered terribly. I mean, it really has been. Um, he's been getting crucified on chemicals, and, you know, as bad as I hate to lose him, I don't want to see him suffer like this. Uh, he's fought really hard really hard for two years, and shouldn't have to do that for a lot longer. Just too much pain. So I told him it was okay with me if he quit taking the chemicals. So. Elizabeth, along with the other wives, doesn't see Alex as a mortal being. But he's not dying a hero's death. He's dying of cancer. It's, it's so ordinary. How long does he have to do the special treatment? Is there a possibility he can get over this? Oh, a possibility of a lot of things, but this one's not looking very good. It gets pretty complicated trying to juggle eight women. Whose anniversary is on Joanna's birthday? Let's leave that out right in this video, okay? Because you go over there and want to make her cry or something. After leaving Alex at the hospital, Eli's first priority was to call home to Margaret with his results. Alex. Margaret, it's Eli. Nothing good. He's pretty horrified. He, I think he said this is awful or something, and he gave it to me, and then he asked it for it back about five times. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody does. Well, yeah, we'll see you tomorrow afternoon. All right, bye-bye. I knew it. I knew it. Hey, Mom, watch this one. I knew it. Mom, watch this one. You gotta get used to it. three things. One pair of great smell, one chemotherapy, and one tobacco. And then you can be comfortable, huh? Let me tell you something. Tomorrow is my wife's birthday. Which wife? Joanna. So I and my son's birthday tomorrow. And which son? Uh Mason. Mason. And uh he was talking to me down. And uh, I don't know about Alex. He can be very charming, but he, he can also be very frustrating. If he doesn't feel like talking about something, he just doesn't. Because two days later, it's our anniversary. Huh. With uh, the same wife? Oh, yeah, 25 years. So it's 25 years. Her birthday and her anniversary are practically on top yeah, of each other. Yeah, only two days apart. It's kind of a sad part because I think I got another anniversary on that day, so that girl, she's going to, you know, kind of be patient. Whose anniversary is on Joanna's birthday? No, it, uh, well, let's leave that out right this minute, okay? Because you go over there and want to make her cry or something. Sick or not, Alex clearly leads a very complicated life. Poor Alex. Hi, Joanna. Hi, Irene. Alex is really looking forward to going to Phoenix. Getting out of town? Getting out of town, because Pat Hogue is... Descending? Yeah, and he said he promised you a birthday dinner. And... 
So, yeah. Of course I said, gee, that's my anniversary. <laughs> so tomorrow is Eli's anniversary. But since Alex is going off with Joanna, I'm going to tag along with Eli for the day. Well, good morning, fabulous news, babe. What's going on this morning with you? Let's say happy anniversary, Eli. Well, you should do like I'm going to do. I'm having a surprise birthday party for myself next Friday. I'm apparently having a surprise anniversary, too. You didn't know about it? No, uh, the other person, you know, takes two to anniversary. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Mm. Friday, March 20th, the first day of spring. Okay. Test one, two, one, two, one, two. Friday, March 20th, with your community billboard this first day of spring, I'm Eli Joseph. Today is supposed to be Eli's special day. I can't tell if this is bothering I'm her. Eli Joseph, Lindy will be right back with the weather sent to forecast. And on top of it, she can't go anywhere without bumping into another wife. Lindy, Alex's seventh wife, also works here at the radio station. Yeah. To me, it's a continued reminder that her husband is with another woman on her anniversary. I'm meeting Elizabeth here at the radio station where she works, and now we're going to go uh, drive for a little bit and film her while she's giving one of her lectures. John and Lindy's anniversary is Sunday. We used to always, the three of us, would go out and play with him to dinner sometimes. You know, but usually, yeah, you spend the night with him and stuff. So is that hard that you won't have a chance to be with him today? Or? No, it's no big deal, and I'm, I'm happy for Joanna, because he said he's going to take her out to dinner and stuff because it's her birthday today. Eli keeps saying that the anniversary issue isn't bothering her, yet all day she keeps reminding herself and me that Alex is spending it with another wife. Despite the trade-offs of being one of eight wives, Elizabeth is still one of Polygamy's biggest fans. We just got to be pretty good buds. We're really proud of one another and we're very protective of one another. Anybody who doesn't fit that profile, we chase them off. When people ask you about polygamy, don't you just feel like, what's the big deal? No, I understand the big deal. Yeah. It's something people are curious about, whether we want to admit it or not. I'm happy to tell her. Even after our initial visits with the Josephs, we still had a lot more questions than answers. So we decided to follow Eli on a weekly lecture she gives on her lifestyle. OK, let's cut to the chase, you want to? I am what is called in these parts a polyg. <laughs> um, my husband has seven wives. I'm the sixth. Well, isn't this against the law? I um, practiced defense for a while, but I could get Alex off in a heartbeat because of the word legal. He doesn't have a legal spouse as defined by the state of Utah. None of us have licenses. Your group doesn't really have one religion. Um, Alex is a very religious man because you can't do this unless you are. I mean, if you think it's just, you know, great for the guy, you get to sleep with a bunch of women. Well, I mean, you don't have to marry them and be responsible for their children if that's what you're after. And I've never seen a guy try this lifestyle with that motive who lasted more than about 14 seconds. If push came to show, is there a hierarchy? If you ask Alex if he has his favorite wife, his answer is yes. And if you ask him whom, who, he says Margaret. And that's the truth. I guess I'm curious as to why there isn't a jealousy factor. I mean, is well, Alex sharing one-seventh of your time and this sort of thing? For starters, jealousy is a male attribute, attribute not a female one. Wow. <laughs> you know, jealousy is a negative emotion. I think we can agree. And not anything anybody wants to be. This is an excellent place to come and learn how not to be jealous. <laughs> because it would eat you alive. Hey, there he is. It's, it's real close, hon. In the early years, there was some insecurity, but I think that would be true of any marriage before you, you know, really understand that this person really, really does care for you and everything's okay. And we just got to be pretty good buds. We're pretty, 
pr pr we're really proud of one another and we're very protective of one another. And anybody who doesn't fit that profile, we chase them off. <laughs> and we're women and we're really good at it. Yeah. What are the, qu what are the questions we haven't asked that you think we should have asked? <laughs> <laughs> the one we're usually asked is, uh, so how, do you have a schedule? <laughs> We pretty much run on a system where, you know, if, if I want to spend Friday, Friday night with him, I ask him if he's free. And he either is or isn't. There's always another night. <laughs> Do you all live in the same town? Big Water is about 500 people. And the Alex is a polyg. There's like four polygamists in town, is all. Everybody else is normal. And Alex, he used to be here, but he's really sick. He's got cancer. He can't do stairs anymore. Eli was here to talk to these people about polygamy. But eventually, almost without thinking, she directed the conversation to a place where no one expected to go. What is his self-prognosis? It's, it's pretty awful. We're at a really, um, this time next week, I'll know. He has been in denial for two years <laughs> and I was with him in St. George Tuesday night after chemo and he said if this thing doesn't turn around now I've got three months. I think the sense of the family is he'll be awfully lucky to get that much. Next on Eyewitness. With almost 30 people in the Joseph's immediate family, we're just starting to figure out who's who. Now they're telling us there's at least a hundred more people just like them showing up for the weekend. You'll be able to pick the weirdos out from the good people. Just ask me and if you think they're, you know, if you're kind of in between, tell me. I'll, I'll tell you. 